Hello guys, so this will be my first tutorial in a series of how to create your first mobile app using xamarin.forms and Prism. Uh, I will show you the goal application here. I already have it set up and built from scratch. So the application will have a um, list of tasks. Each task will have its deadline and when it's completed. Um, you can save and edit the items. You can search. You can sort. And you can add new items. Like this. And you can add the deadline for it. And you can see the search is valid, it's working fine. And you can filter by some text that you enter. Or if there is no tasks, if there is no task matching the criteria. And we'll start from the scratch. Okay, so knowing all that, um, in the first episode let me show you what you need to have in, in already installed. So if you have Visual Studio Community 2022 or some other Visual Studio, doesn't matter, you need to have installed the mobile development with .NET for Summer and Forms. Okay, make sure you have that. And then in the Visual Studio, when you open it, you create a new project. You search for mobile app. Mobile app, Xamarin.forms. Okay. And let's call this task manager. Episode 1. Okay. Let's create a blank project for Android and iOS. Even though we will not be working with iOS uh, for this tutorial, I don't have it set up, so we will just use, we will just unload the project. Okay. Uh, let me now swap out to the mobile dev. For some reason, um, sorry, okay, now it should be fine. Uh, let me just edit the source in OBS. Okay, uh, so let's start some start with basic setup so what we need we, we want to build this application with prism and i will show you how to do so first of all let's uh, update some of the installed nuget packages let's update them all to the latest version okay and now usually what happens is if you wanna install the prism um, you would wanna go with the with the extensions for the project template let me show you and in manage extensions you would search for prism prism template pack but it's not ready for the visual studio 2012 so we'll have to do this by ourselves anyways so let's start Install. We install 
prism that forms to our project and we will be using dry IOC for the prism uh, dependency ejection and the inversion of control and let's install it to both the projects as well okay and now let's go to prism library and let's see how we can use the prism without this project wizard so what we need to do is we need to change our app to to use prism application instead of the default app so we will do this by going into app and we will just simply add that namespace here and we will use prism application okay so there is that and now our application can be prism application and we can copy and paste their original setup code okay and it's not yet recognizing we need to rebuild the project for it to work but i will show you let me show you when we rebuild it should all work uh, that is because we when we add the prism application here it takes some time for it to realize that this up this auto generated code needs to be the prism application one not the Xamarin forms application okay and let's now start by deleting the original main page and let's start by structuring our project properly uh, first of all let's uh, create two folders one is for views and the other one is view models sorry not the new solution item but the new folder new models okay in our views we will add our first page let's call it main page sorry not a class but um, content page okay and the prism tells us we can just use their navigation service to navigate to our main page okay let's include our main page here and our main page uh, view model no not like that let's add our own new main page view model if you're unfamiliar, unfamiliar with this this is the MVVM pattern for working with applications so we will have our views and all the business logic will be happening in the view models and we'll be using bindings to connect the two okay and um, let's test this out so let's build this to my 
Samsung device. Okay. I guess it takes some time on the first build, but um, it will work. Okay, so this is the completed application here, and this is the deployed one. And let's see. Welcome to Summer Informs. Okay, so it works. Uh, before we start anything, we wanna make sure that we we wanna improve this navigation method. So let's add a new folder called Extensions, and let's create an extension method to this service where we can say navigate a sync and main page in there. Uh, by doing this, we, we are not using strings, but we are using the actual types. So we are getting that type safety. And let's uh, go to the original method. Let's copy the, copy the um, declaration, the, how, how do you call it? Signature. Uh, and let's set navigation extensions here. Needs to be public, static. Oh yeah, don't work with internal for, even though it's default for 2002 Visual Studio, it doesn't work well with Xamarin at all, so never make an internal class, always make it public if possible. Um, anyways, so how to create a extension method? Well, you need to have a static method. And that static method needs to... needs to have a extension on something by using a keyword this on the first argument. Uh, we will be extending navigation service, which is I navigation service. So let's extend navigation. And let's build our method. Let's write return navigation dot navigate a sync and the we will be using a string but how do we get this t page let's add a constraint first our t page needs to be a summary page for example that's a good enough constraint for this so how do we get what the name out of this well we call type of t page and we get its name. We use the reflection to get this type, which will be main page, add page, some other page, doesn't matter, and we call the dot name on it. And we can use it to navigate a sync there. And let's add some optional parameter start navigation equals false and if start navigation is true then we wanna navigate with navigation page as our first page in the in the path so let's say page name then equals
page name. Uh, let's call, let's use the name of navigation page and our page. And this sign here means we will restart, reset the navigation stack. Okay. And let's use this extension now to navigate the main page. And let's use our extensions. That's it. See? Pretty cool. But we don't like async void. So what I like to do here as a debugging thing as well. Instead I just call the task and I use continue with. And if that task has, ex has an exception or result of navigation has an exception. I make a breakpoint here just to see when something doesn't work. Let me show you by example. Let me not uh, navigate. Let me not register for navigation this main page. And let's see what will happen. Okay, so you can see here task exception is null, but the result of navigation has an exception. And if you see the inner message, no page has been registered with the provided key. And that is because we never, never registered it for any navigation. Okay. But if you do, it should work all fine. As you can see now, welcome to Xamarin Forms. But we don't have the navigation track, meaning we did not send this parameter here. And let's try again. Okay, you can see we have the navigation track. Okay, so now when we look at the end application, let's try to build this main page here. Just the UI, the looks of it. Uh, so how do we do so? How do we do this? Um, let's first make our first bind. No not binding but yeah actually let's make a first binding uh, by first creating a base view model so let's call it view model base let's make it a public class and let's make it have title for the page title okay and let's make this bindable base uh, what is a bindable base well bindable base allows us to to notify the UI of, of the changes on our properties so for this public property here for the getter we can just return the title right but when we are setting the value we can call the bindable base property where we send the title and the value and it will notify the ui of the change and now on our main view model we can inherit the view model base and we can, in our, in our constructor here, set the title to, let's say, uh, task list. What you can see from, from our end, end project, task list. And let's bind it. How do we do it? the binding? 
wherein well in our main page we say title is binding title okay and let's test this out let's see if we will get the title up there okay so it works uh, okay so we could start building our UI now let's use this as our cheat sheet so that we can see the what it needs to look like um, and let's start by building it so first of all you can see like this here this area here is separate from everything else so we can use a grid make some grid.row definitions and make two rows first one let's say it has a height of 40 and the second one a star star means it gets gets the rest of the screen is for it um, let me show you let, let, let's run the application we can start building our XAML here using hot reload to see the changes in real time so we can say tech layout row grid dot row zero zero background color is red and another stack layout where the grid okay see now we can we know what this grid is giving us but uh, we don't want this spacing in between so we can say uh, row spacing equals zero uh, for some reason it will not work until we actually yeah until we it doesn't reload on this property for some reason anyways uh, we don't want this we want the first row to have a search bar and uh, some sort of a sort control as you can see in the end solution but let's let's leave that for later let's first um, let's first create um, search bar and uh, leave some space for the other control and let's make it by using another grid this one will be on grid.row zero we don't need to write write this for the zero value but i still like to write it out just so that um, it's cleaner this way in my opinion okay so grid this grid will have few columns column definitions and let's say column definition width for the first one let's say it's a star it takes this search bar takes as much as possible and the next one let's say takes up some something like 50 we don't know but we will see it later and let's set the search bar with um, let's say placeholder search tasks and cancel button color let's say dodger blue okay I'm pretty sure this should be reflected yeah and you can see this this works to what we expected to work 
except here it looks like it's bigger and centered on the middle so let's try to achieve that so let's say first row is actually 50 and it's already looking better and let's say this is 100 okay so now this looks way better okay so what's next what's in our next part of the application so we need to have a collection view here this list of items and this image button at the bottom so we will overlap one over each other we will overlap this button over the list and to do so you usually again use grid so you use a lot of grids in Xamarin forms there are other ways to do it but I simply just prefer using grid so we will have um, here we will have grid dot um, actually nothing we will just have a collection view which will have horizontal options fill and expand and vertical options fill and expand and let's say it has some white smoke background so that it looks a bit different from the top top one but we made a mistake we didn't assign it to, to the proper row so let's do that as you can see now this area is let's let's use gray instead okay you see now it's it's this area here and let's use image button um, and let's put it vertical options and then expand horizontal options also and then expand and let's define some width let's say 60 and height also 60 so you can see now the button is in the corner there let's um, let's make some corner radius okay 30 it's 30 now mm and let's make background color dodger blue to be this bluish color okay so once we save the color it also made it look better as a circle and we want some margins uh, so the margins go left top right and bottom so let's see left nothing top nothing bottom let's say 30 left top right is 30 and bottom is 30 as well and you can see the button is now here we are missing the image for it but we can edit we can edit now and I will show you how let me swap out to Google uh, so I'm using um, you can search for material IO and I'm using the icons from material anyways my connection I think is not that great today uh, but anyways uh, there you select let me try again then you just search for material icon you want for example add anyways doesn't seem to be working well um, you search for the add icon and then you choose Android
then choose Android here and you press download um, material icon sorry add you choose Android you choose white or black doesn't matter whatever you need actually I will show you how to tint image later but for now we need a white icon for that um, button there and we get this add white android uh, zip and let's put it here it's already there and let's extract it to add white android and here you will see what you get so what I do here I usually just take the highest resolution one and name it as you can see I already did it here and I just delete all the other ones I copy the name and I go into the next folder and I rename this one and just delete the other ones so since I already did this I will just I already have the um, highest one so I will just delete everything else uh, sorry and what you do is you select this you press copy and you paste them into you open this folder in file explorer on the android project and you paste it here now you press this button to show all files in your solution and you just include in project you control and click on all on each item that you need and you include it in the project and now we can have a image source image button ha to have a source add and let's see how that looks like on our application okay we will just we'll turn this back to white smoke later on so that it doesn't remain that ugly gray color anyways uh, let's wait for the build okay so we have have the button here but it's not looking it's a uh, really big in in size so you can use this padding property to actually lower it now 20 is too much I think 10 is just enough okay so what we need now is for that control over in the top we need those two arrows we can just download the arrows so let me show you so in icons here let's search for arrow and I think it was arrow downward but we want it to be material icons let's search arrow downward let's say it's white or black in, because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why later currently we, we can't colorize we can't in the image that's for another episode but let's just download the black ones for now okay 
and let's go to icons and let me show you the full process uh, arrow downward black arrow upward black let's extract it so downward black so how do I do this arrow down for the highest quality one highest resolution one and then just using the keyboard shortcuts I can do this quickly and just delete all the other ones okay and here just rename it let's copy this and um, paste it to resources that's the first part and the second part is well that was I think downward right yeah so arrow black upward Let's copy this name and we can do this pretty fast if you are good with your keyboard show shortcuts and oops that's it basically okay and copy these and let's oh no copy full part I messed up where are these okay copy these and paste them here okay so now when you click this button again you will see that there are new items to be added to the project and just click Control, Control plus click on each, and then when all of, all of them are selected, you include them in project. Okay, so let's add that control here as well. Not a control, but let's just make two images. Source is equal arrow down. Let's actually run the application so we can see Hot Reload working for us. Okay, so it needs to have a grid that column one. Okay, and let's add the arrow up as well there. But let's add uh, some sort of margin to this one. Left, top, right, bottom. Okay, now it looks better. And let's say with request is something like 30. Height request is also 30 for the first one. Okay, that doesn't work. Let's say 25 by 25. Okay, this doesn't reload the image. Maybe this will. Hmm. Never mind, let's, let's just leave it like this for now. It's good enough. We have some work to do with the items in the list. So how do we create? We, we can already do something like collection view dot empty item. 
empty view sorry uh, this is the view that will show up when there are no tasks on the list so let me show you in the completed app for example if the filter is this then there are no tasks matching the criteria and we can easily just add this here some content view and let's set a label text exactly this no tasks matching the criteria and some margin some vertical options let's say center horizontal options center actually vertical we want it to be start right and let's see in our project how it works see no tasks matching the criteria let's some let's add some margin left then top let's say 100 okay 100 is too much let's say 60 and let's say text color equals our dodger blue which is our favorite color here and font attributes both and this looks pretty nice uh, for the start this is when our collection view is empty and now we need to build collection view items um, item template which is the hardest part for this tutorial um, I will take a short break and be right back ok I'm back so before we start uh, doing our template here let's let's just set it up to something like stack layout with the background color red let's add some items to the collection view and how do we do that so we do it by creating a collection on the view model and we bind it to the item source of the collection view and for that um, we will need models and um, I will add another folder for models of, for UI and our UI model will be task UI and let's make it public so what does our task need to have if you look here it needs to have um, some name right it needs to have description it needs to have a deadline which is this here um, also needs to have a uh, if you look at this icon here this indicates whether it's completed or not you can uh, see when you edit the item whether it's not it's complete so if you press this you will get this icon so that's a boolean is completed And our task also has a completion date, but we are not showing it, so it doesn't need to be on the UI part. Okay, so now that we have the item, we can make observable collection of this item. Observable collection of start UI. Observable collection is usually used for collection views because it notifies the UI whether whenever the item is added, removed or edited or stuff like that. So 
we will be using observable collection for our items and let's just make it let's just make it um, to have a get assessor and initialize it in our constructor and here we can add some task UI items for testing let's say name equals task1 description equals task1 test and deadline equals date time dot to day at days one something like this okay and let's now bind the item source to our items okay and let's now run it to see how it looks like in our application we should just get a red background for each item but we are not getting that maybe we need vertical options horizontal options no maybe just height request okay now it works and you can see each item takes up 50 of the height request okay so let's try to build the okay let's try to build the similar UI to ours here so what do we need for that we need a grid as usual but the first grid will be our padding as you can see between the items so let's make the first grid only a padding grid so on left and right let's say we have a value of 10 and on top and bottom let's have a 5 because top and bottom will collide with each other and they will make up this 10 padding on so we'll have 10 padding of 10 on each side okay and then the next item here as you can see this um, edge is rounded so it means we are using a frame a uh, frame by default has some nasty padding so we'll just remove it uh, let's add some properties to it it it's clipped to bounce through um, background color let's say white and let's say background color here for the padding one to be transparent well, let's make this red for now and let's make some corner radius like 20 let's see what happens now okay again nothing is showing up because we we don't have anything to take up the space maybe like this okay now you can see uh, we do have three items but we never bound any of their properties okay so let's uh, now build this up by first setting up okay let's cheat peek at the solution so we want one column here uh, last one here and this space to be filled up by the rest which this one can take up so what our columns are we can say that we have one column with some sort of automatic width 
then we have a star width and then let's say we will know that the date and delete icon will have some width of 100 okay and now let's say let's define the rows with some with some actual values uh, row definition for the first one let's say height is um, 30 or something and the second row is 80 so now this should give us let's try to height request it this should give us the proper grid let's uh, restart the application I think it should work without the height request so let's see that because we define the rows and the heights no it actually doesn't okay but um, let's say vertical options fill and expand and horizontal options fill and expand okay maybe we just need to add the items like labels for okay let's just then add the label for label for the name let's bind the name binding name text color is black here and the font attributes is bold okay um, then we have a label for text where it's bound to description and text color is Dodger blue font attributes it's also bold but um, let's make this like font size 16 and then sorry the description is like on size 14 or something um, as you can see now it's showing up finally in our application so what do we need to do um, for descriptions not to overlap here so they are going into they are going into grid dot row equals one now this is way better um, they also have a column span they spend that, that this means they span over multiple columns and they will take up first two columns okay and let's add a label for the for the deadline and now we need to Google something, so we need to format the this string here for the deadline. You can easily just Google sum of format deadline. Okay, my connection is messing up a bit. Anyways, okay, so this is how you format the date. 
we don't need this part we just wanna want it with the dots in between and we want European type of date okay but um, where does this label go let me copy out some attributes uh, sorry for example bold and Uh, this one goes to uh, third column so grid that grid that column equals two okay and now we can add some padding to our grid let's say 10 and now this looks way better and similar to this one the end result okay um, now let's try and um, google some lorem ipsum to make some greater description so let's copy this for one of the descriptions so for example where is it for task one task three let's paste this text and for task three as well okay and let's run it again let's see what we can do for this okay you see how it's cutting down so that's kind of uh, okay for us maybe we just want to um, define how many lines is the maximum and line break mode we can say maybe a character or a word wrap that should be fine you know if the description is too long just um make make it cut it out make it cut out doesn't matter okay um i don't like this padding maybe 15 could be better yeah and this height where is it could be less let's say 70 okay padding let's say from the left it's 15 but from the top it's 10 this is better this is looking better okay and the deadline let's reduce the font size to a bit okay and the background color let's make it white and we are only missing the done icons here whether or not the task is done so let's uh, google that let's find um, let's find our icon I think it's done all or something yes it's called done all and let's make it um, black for now because we don't have image tinting that will be our next tutorial uh, or maybe in this one we will see okay um, anyways let's um, let's see done all black android summary forms icons and let's paste it here 
and let's let's take this one and delete the others same here Same here. Okay, and draw Voltano. Let's copy this and paste it to resources. And paste this here. Now show all files and include it in our project. Um, where is it? can't include the project for some reason let's see maybe I oh yeah we are running the code we need to stop the debug session okay so where does this go uh, well this goes actually in our first row next to the name so instead of having the name here we'll have a stack layout with orientation horizontal yeah and we will have image with source is done all and this visible will be bound to is completed from our task and let's say with request is 20 height request is also 20 and let's put our label in here as well with vertical option center and let's make image also have vertical option center okay let's look at this one so actually nothing will happen because we don't have a task that is complete so let's um where is the stop build cancel build okay so let's put some is completed to the task one equals true and let's say task 3 also equals true and let's see how this looks okay so we can see this looks not bad it's not perfect maybe we could add some padding to the left as well maybe a bit more padding let's see in the example yeah now this looks better to me okay and we are missing actually the delete icon so let's actually get the delete icon I think I already have this one on the disk so in icons there is uh, where is it actually I don't never mind let's just use the delete and let's download the black version for Android okay let's extract to black delete black Android again just call it delete 
copy. And that's it. Call delete. Let's open up the resources. Paste it up here. And let's include it in project. Okay. So this is another image. So where do we show this image? Well, in in the second should be in the grid that row one. A vertical options should be start horizontal option should be end and size let's say 30 by 30 should be fine and uh, grid that column is 2 okay let's test this out Okay, so you can see now it's starting to look like the original application that I've created. It still looks like, still looks a bit like, for example, this delete icon could be maybe higher or something. We could add some padding to it as well. So where is it? Let's say margin is top left, top right and bottom. Okay. Like this. Um, this grid itself, this padding could be left, top, right and bottom maybe like this yeah and um, we could try to make this 60 with maximum lines on this one 3 Okay, so now this is looking better, in my opinion. Um, these images up here, they could be smaller. I think 30 by 30 could be better. And margin like 20. Something like this. For some reason, they are not they are not getting uh, resized. Maybe if I put it to something like ten by ten, let me try to restart. Anyways, we should be done with this. This is good enough for the first video. Yeah, images. Are not getting resized properly we'll look into that um, later on but uh, the UI is looking pretty good 
but that was our first task and um, later on we will replace some of these things with styles like these colors that we are using or stuff like that we could do it with styles and yeah we will we, there's a lot of work to be done on this application before it's um, in its final state where you can add, edit items you can sort items search items you know but this is a first step so I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next episode